Hi there, thanks so much for joining us. Um, now, to get started, can you give us a little bit of context about where you're coming from um, and your work? Sure, so uh, my name is Amy Maiden. I am the currently the managing partner of an arts consultancy called Anthem, uh, and I am the former general manager of ATYP. Fantastic. And so over this seminar, I guess I'm wondering what are sort of the core things that um, you're wanting to bring up and, and have a discussion about as a collective? Mm. So I have been brought in, or I was invited to come to talk on a panel that's all about audiences and rebuilding audiences post-COVID, uh, and my kind of lens on audience from a really macro perspective across lots of different sectors mm. um, and being able to really kind of hone in on youth audiences and, and, and really talking about what is engaging with youth audiences once they're in charge of their own finances to then make the decision to purchase a ticket and, yeah. and get involved from an audience perspective of, of the arts. Fantastic. Are, are, are there things that you think companies aren't taking advantage of to get more pumps on the seats and reaching out to their audiences? Yeah, I think at the moment we do a lot of research in um, arts audiences and talk to a lot of ticket buyers across a really broad reach and up and down the country. And the biggest message that I'm hearing at the moment is that people need safety and guarantees. It's been a really tumultuous couple of years and people need to know that, sure, it's going to be worth their money, but it's going to be worth their time. Giving up a Wednesday night at home to go to the theatre is a much bigger ask than it used to be. And so when it comes from a comms and marketing perspective, what companies need to be doing is assuring people that this is a quality use of 90 minutes or two hours by the time they've parked the car. Mm. And that can be really difficult, I think, especially in the youth art space, because a lot of the work that's created is brand new, new Australian work. The show often doesn't know what it is until it is realised. Mm. And so that is where a real focus needs to be um, in terms of communicating to audiences before the show is finalised. <laughs> exactly how they're going to feel when they see it, what it's going to do for them and therefore why they should buy a ticket. Fantastic. Now going into, I guess, the next year, there's still a little bit of uncertainty in terms of um, the economy is going downward and less people are wanting to spend money. Um, are there things that companies can be doing to excite their audiences and still keep them um, engaged? Yeah, I think that companies need to think beyond a show-to-show -show perspective. You mm -hmm. need to be thinking long term. You need to be thinking about engaging your audiences from the first time they hear about you until all the time that they become a donor. And there's a real pipeline through that process. I will say that when the, uh, the GFC hit way back when, the one thing that people continued to spend money on was theatre tickets. Right. They cut out um, inter international travel. They cut out fancy restaurants and things like that. They brought down spending on clothes, but what they kept was tickets to shows because mm. that can be deemed a family event, a special thing, a night out, a reward. Uh, and so I'm clinging to the hope that that will continue as we head through what is coming down the pipeline for us economically. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, are there any things that you think um, you're really hopeful about in terms of the arts? Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing a really amped up, excited audience um, of, of young people, mm. people who are kind of 15 to, you know, I know 29 might not technically be young, uh, but that kind of, that demographic absolutely love going out to see and buying tickets to product that is relevant, that they are deem is relevant to them. Really passionate about big themes, not shying away from difficult topics, really want to get in there and have a big conversation. I think there's an ambition and an appetite that is tremendously exciting. Wonderful. Now, are there any sort of calls to action or uh, I know funding is a big issue for a lot of companies. So um, what's your perspective on that as we've just had the last two years of COVID? In terms of what do, what do we need as a sector? Yeah, what do we need? <coughs> That's a good question. I would think um, sure, we always need more funding, right? Mm. I think that's an ongoing conversation. But I think what we need is actually a shift in perception about what youth arts is. Mm. I think that there can be a false assumption that youth arts is not as good as what is on stage at, say, a Griffin or a Belvoir, when actually, most of the time, it is, you know, like for like in terms of quality, new writing, challenging work. And so I think really my call to action would be, and my question to the cohort mm. would be, how do we shift that perception? Right. What are we putting into market to have the production stand toe to toe with the other com which are competitors in the market? Yeah. Well, do you have any ideas about what that could be? Oh, I could talk for hours. Wonderful. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Won't steal all your knowledge. Yeah. <laughs>
Come to my seminar at one o'clock. Yeah, okay. I booked in. <laughs>